are continuing with the bacteriology section and today let's see in detail about various groups of bacteria streptococcus so from this area the most frequently asked questions are to describe in detail about streptococcus pyogenes streptococcus viridens and group d streptococcus so uh, today we will be discussing in detail about streptococcus pyogenes so generally streptococcus are gram positive cocci and they are seen in chains or as pairs they are human pathogens they are classified into alpha hemolytic category beta hemolytic category and gamma hemolytic category first one is alpha hemolytic streptococci so this category produce a greenish discoloration around the colonies so this is due to the partial hemolysis here the zone of hemolysis will be very small and there will be unlysed erythrocytes uh, and these unlysed erythrocytes are det detectable microscopically alpha hemolysis is seen in viridens category next is beta hemolytic streptococci so this category produce a clear colorless zone of complete hemolysis and here the erythrocytes will be completely lysed and the complete lysis of erythrocytes is mainly due to the production of two types of uh, streptolysins and they are streptolysin o and streptolysin s and the example for this category is streptococcus pyogenes and also the beta hemolytic uh, streptococci were classified by lansfield uh, on the basis of, uh, on the basis of serological test uh, they are categorized uh, into 20 groups from a to b uh, based on precipitation so uh, lansfield conducted a precipitation reaction uh, and it was performed with appropriate sera and uh, they are named as lansfield groups and we have 20 lansfield groups which is named from a to v and majority of streptococci that produce human infection uh, belong to the group a streptococci uh, next is gamma or non hemolytic streptococci so this category produce no hemolysis and the example is streptococcus faecalis uh, or and enterococcus category and now let's discuss in detail about streptococcus pyogenes first let's see the morphology the streptococcus pyogenes they are usually spherical or oval in shape and the diameter is 0.5 to 1 micrometer and they are arranged in chains so the, they are arranged in chains because because of the successive cell division occurring in one plane and the daughter cell will fail to separate completely and thus they will be arranged arranged in chains and they are usually gram positive non motile and non sporing bacteria and the capsules the capsules of uh, some strains of streptococcus pyogenes have capsules composed of hyaluronic acid next is culture so they are aerobes and facultative anaer anaerobes and they they will be growing best at a temperature of 37 degree celsius and uh, they will be growing only in medias containing blood serum or agar on blood agar they will be producing small colonies that is uh, 0.5 to 1 mm in size and pin point they will be circular semi transparent low convex with wide zone of beta hemolysis around them and the growth and hemolysis are promoted by 10 percentage carbon dioxide in the environment and selective media with 1 is to 5 lakh crystal violet uh, it helps helps in the growth of streptococcus streptococcus and they will inhibit the growth of staphylococcus then in liquid media as like glucose broth we can see granular turbidity with powdery deposit that is the heavier chains will get deposited uh, will settle down next are biochemical reactions so uh, unlike staphylococcus uh, the st streptococcus are catalyzed negative and they are no non soluble in 10 percentage bile unlike streptococcus pneumoniae next is resistance they are very delicate and get inactivated by heat at 56 degree celsius for 30 minutes they dies in culture media within days 
but they can be stored in robots and cooked meat media at 4 degrees celsius and they are susceptible to sulfonamide and antibiotics next is the antigenic structure it include capsular hyaluronic acid group specific uh, polysaccharide antigen type specific antigen so the capsular hyaluronic acid uh, the capsule may be present on group a and c streptococci and the capsule if present will inhibit the phagocytosis next is group specific polysaccharide antigen and the cell wall is composed of outer layer of protein and lipoticoic acid a middle layer of group specific c carbohydrates and inner layer of peptidoglycan and the peptidoglycan is respons responsible for the rigidity of the cell wall uh, and the last one is type specific antigen the outer part of the cell wall contains protein antigens uh, and now let's see about the toxins produced by streptococcus pyogens they are hemolysins and streptococcus pyogenic exotoxins that is spe first one is hemolysins Uh, the streptococci produce two types of hemolysin streptolysin o and streptolysin s streptolysin o is so named because it is oxygen labile that is they will get inactivated in the presence of oxygen it is heat labile it lyses the red cells and is also cytotoxic for neutrophils platelets um, and cardiac tissues it is antigenic and anti streptolysin o that is aso will regularly appears in the sera following streptococcal infection an aso titer in the serum uh, more than 200 units suggest either recent or recurrent streptococcal infection uh, and next is streptolysin s it is oxygen stable they are oxygen stable hemolysin and is responsible for the hemolysis seen around colonies of streptococci on the surface of blood agar in addition to hemolytic property it has leukocidal action uh, next toxin is streptococcal pyogenic exotoxin exotoxin that is spe this toxin is responsible for streptococcal toxic shock syndrome and scarlet fever sp is also called as erythrogenic toxin it is only produced by lysogenic strains of group a streptococci uh, this toxin is responsible for dick test and schulz charlton test when the toxin is injected intradermally into the skin of a child of a susceptible child there will be a localized erythematous erythematous reaction this is called dick test and in scarlet fever when homologous antitoxin is injected locally into the rash blanching of the rash occurs it is called as schulz charlton reaction these tests are now only of historical importance as scarlet fever is now very rarely seen next is enzymes uh the enzymes produced by streptococcus pyogens are streptokinase which is also called as fibrinolysin then deoxyribonuclease which is also called as streptodonase then nicotinamide adenine dinucleotidase nadase and hyaluronidase hyaluronidase these are the enzymes produced by streptococcus pyogens now let's see about the pathogenesis of streptococcus pyogens so uh, they produce pyogenic infections with a tendency to spread locally and non separative uh, sequelae of local infection include acute glomerulonephritis and rheumatic fever uh, now let's see the pyogenic infections caused by streptococcus pyogens first one is respiratory infections it includes sore throat it is the most common streptococcal infection Uh, and in scarlet fever it is a combination of sore throat and a generalized erythematous rash it is caused by a strain producing the erythrogenic toxin next are skin infections they produce separative infections uh, in the skin with a predilection to produce lymphangitis and cellulitis infection of minor abrasions may sometimes lead to fatal septicemia uh, two typical streptococcal skin infections are erysipelas and impetigo these skin infections are main cause leading to acute glomerulonephritis and uh, uh, acute glomerulonephritis in children next is streptococcus stss that is streptococcal toxic shock syndrome it is a condition in which the entire organ system will collapse and finally lead to death streptococcus toxic shock syndrome resembles staphylococcal toxic shock syndrome and patients are of often bacteremia Uh, and the patients have uh, bacteremia and have necrotizing fasciitis other pyogenic infections are uh, purpural sepsis sepsis pyemia septicemia and abscess in 
uh, internal organs then comes the non separative complication it include acute rheumatic fever and acute glomerular nephritis now let's see the lab diagnosis of streptococcus pyogenes first is for acute separative uh, infections first we collect the specimens so the specimens uh, should be collected according to the sites of infection or sites of lesion uh, like swab uh, then pus or blood then comes the collection and transport the specimens should be collected in sterile containers under aseptic conditions and we use pyx transport media for transportation and it is blood agar containing 1 is to 10 lakh crystal violet and 1 in 16000 sodium acid next comes the gram staining so in gram staining they are gram positive cocci which are arranged in chains next is the culture media culture methods the specimen is inoculated in blood agar media and incubated at 37 degree celsius uh, for 18 to 24 hours and uh, hemolysis that hemolysis develops better under anaerobic conditions or in the presence of 5 to 10 percentage carbon di- carbon dioxide crystal violet blood agar is a selective medium for streptococcus pyogenes next is the colony morphology and staining the colonies of streptococci are very small that is 0.5 to 1 mm and pin point size compared to the pin head size of staphylococcus and they are circular low convex with zone of beta hemolysis and and a liquid media that is like glucose broth they produce granular turbidity with powdery deposits and in gram staining they they uh, they are seen as gram positive cocci arranged in chains and in hanging drop preparation they are non motile cocci next comes the biochemical reactions those uh, and the streptococci are catalyzed negative and uh, they uh, they are inactive towards bile next is the identification of various uh, groups of streptococci so group a streptococci they are more sensitive to bacitracin and next is group b group b streptococci are identified by cam reaction that is christy atkins and munch peterson reaction then group d group d are uh, group d can be isolated by performing heat resistance test next is lansfield grouping uh, the lansfield grouping uh, hemolytic streptococci are grouped serologically by the lansfield technique next is antigenic detection test and the antigenic detection test elisa and agglutination test are used to demonstrate group a streptococcal antigen from the throat swabs next are molecular methods the molecular methods include dna probes and polymerase chain reaction next are next is a lab diagnosis for non separative reaction uh, it includes serological test and the most commonly used test or the routine test is aso titration that is uh, anti streptolysin o titration that is a titer of 200 units or more is significant in rheumatic fever and is indicative of recent or recurrent streptococcal infection aso test is a neutralization reaction where antibodies to streptolysin o are neutralized with streptolysin o antigen aso titer is usually found in high levels in uh, rheumatic fever but in glomerular nephritis titers tend to be low therefore anti deoxyribonuclease b estimation is more reliable titers higher than 300 or 350 are significant This test is very useful for retrospective diagnosis of streptococcal pyoderma for which ASO is of very less value. Next is the treatment for streptococcus pyogenes. Uh, it includes penicillin G. Penicillin G is the drug of choice. Uh, in patients allergic to penicillin we can use erythromycin or cefalexin. So that was all about streptococcus pyogenes. Thank you. Hello all. As you all know in the last section we discussed about streptococcus pyogenes. and today let's discuss in detail about group d streptococci and streptococcus viridens uh, which are from the same group of streptococcus in bacteriology first let's see about group d streptococci so they are frequently asked as uh, short notes or as a part of long essay or short essay group d streptococci are classified into enterococci and non enterococci enterococci is also called as fecal streptococci non enterococci is also called as non fecal streptococci usually the group d streptococci are non hemolytic and some strains may be alpha hemolytic or beta hemolytic 
and the enterococci group now it it is reclassified as separate genus called as enterococcus and the non enterococci group we can inhibit the growth of non enterococci group by 6.5 percentage sodium chloride and group d streptococci and enterococci they both can be uh, they both are positive to bile osculin hydrolysis test so in in biochemical reactions they are positive to bile osculin hydrolysis test and examples for non enterococci group is streptococcus bovis and streptococcus equinus and usually group d streptococci cocci causes genito urinary infection and rarely it causes endocarditis and usually the group d streptococci are susceptible to penicillin and now let's see about streptococcus viridans it's a very important portion and frequently streptococcus viridans it can be asked as short note and sometimes as part of long essay or short essay sometimes uh, it can be asked, uh, asked as uh, karyogenic bacteria also so now let's see in detail about this streptococcus viridans they show alpha hemolysis in blood agar it is called as viridans because viridis means green and we know as they show alpha hemolysis uh, they will be exhibiting greenish discoloration on blood agar they are common commensal of mouth and upper respiratory tract and it include streptococcus mites streptococcus anagenesis and streptococcus bovis and streptococcus miller-i and group f strepto and group f are included in streptococcus anagenesis group and they possess lansfield a c f g or none at all usually they are non pathogenic and occasionally they causes diseases and the common diseases caused are dental caries and subacute bacterial endocarditis and the dental caries is caused by streptococcus mutans so streptococcus mutans is a causative agent for dental caries so this streptococcus mutans breaks down dietary sucrose producing acid and a tough adhesive dextran the acid damages the dentin while the dextran binds together the food debris mucus epithelial cells and bacteria to form dental plaque these plaques will lead to dental caries and about 40% of subacute bacterial endocarditis is caused by viridans groups of streptococci and usually urogenital and uh, gastrointestinal diseases gastrointestinal diseases are caused by the members of streptococcus mites and they cause endocarditis in persons with predisposing factors such as valvular disease disease of the heart congenital heart disease and cardiac surgery following some dental procedures like uh, tooth extraction they may cause transient bacteremia and get implanted on damaged or prosthetic valves or in the congenitally diseased heart and they will grow to form vegetations prophylactic antibiotics should be given in such persons before tooth extraction or other procedures viridans streptococci are generally penicillin sensitive but some strains strains may be resistant hence antibiotic sensitivity of these bacteria must be determined for appropriate treatment of endocarditis So that's all for today thank you